This video is part two in a series where I share an easy recipe to help a neurologist better care for people impacted by MS. If you'd like to learn more, don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. This video is the second part in a two-part series where I share an easy recipe for a neurologist to up his game and better care for people impacted by MS. It's based off of an article that I recently wrote, which was published in Neurology Live. The article was entitled, Treating MS, a Simplified Strategy Boosts Patient and Provider Satisfaction. And I'll include a link to that article in the description below in case you'd like to read it. I ask neurologists to help people with MS be four for four in their fight against the disease. The first step is to choose the most effective DMT they're comfortable with and monitor. And I cover all of that in the first video. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll throw a link up above and I'll also include a link in the description down below. In this video, we're going to be covering a step two, three, and four. That's avoiding tobacco smoke and other cardiovascular risk factors, exercising as part of your lifestyle, and eating clean and supplementing low levels of vitamin D. So let's jump in. But first, the question of the day. Choose the right answer. Smoking tobacco, A, has no impact on MS disease progression, B, slows MS disease progression, or C, speeds up MS disease progression. Please jot down your response and tune in to the end of the video to find out the correct answer. Step two in my recipe for doctors to better care for folks impacted by MS is to address tobacco smoke. Now, very few neurologists say, smoke up, Johnny, and yet I'm amazed at how passive this community of treaters can be in counseling against smoking. Smoking cigarettes increases the risk to develop MS. And if you already have MS, smoking cigarettes can speed up the disease by upwards of 50%. Now, if you stop smoking, it slows the disease back down. And smoking is in fact the most uh, impactful, modifiable risk factor that we have. I certainly don't want people with MS to smoke cigarettes and I want doctors to engage their patients in conversations. The reality is we have a lot of tools to help you quit smoking. And I want doctors to be proactive in engaging patients in conversation about how are you smoking? How's it going? Is it going really well? Any interest in quitting, etc. I'll throw a link up above to a video I did where I share multiple tips in how someone can approach quitting smoking. And if you're interested, please check that out. Step three in the rubric is to encourage patients to exercise as part of their lifestyle. I want neurologists to encourage patients to move. Exercise is remarkable in MS and has been shown to slow disease progression. Literally, people with MS that are physically active have a slower disease progression long-term. Exercise also helps prepare you for an attack. What I mean by that is, if you're in shape and have strong legs and good balance and a strong core, you're gonna handle what MS throws at you a lot better than if you're out of shape and deconditioned. There's good research that suggests that exercise in the setting of MS improves cognition, thinking and memory, guys. MS exercise can improve mood. Exercise can improve other things like energy levels and sleep quality, and even poor balance and spasticity. It is a really important component in being the best you can be despite having the condition. And I want neurologists to champion exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now, I think that the best exercise program for MS needs to include four categories. So what are they? The first one is cardiovascular fitness. And if you're thinking, gosh, Aaron, it'd be really hard for me to go out and jog, I understand that. And I would submit to you that getting on a stationary recumbent bike is a great way of doing that. If you can't use your legs, you could use a hand crank and accomplish the same goal. The second element is balance. And looking into something like yoga or chair yoga is a great way to accomplish that. The third element is strengthening the core. And this can be done multiple different ways, including things like Pilates. And the last one is flexibility, which can be accomplished by an outstanding stretching regimen. 
If someone with MS isn't sure of how to get started with exercise, or their neurologist isn't sure what to recommend, I think a pro tip is to refer the patient to a neurophysical therapist. They are expertly trained to assess what needs to be done and what adaptive measures might be necessary to get that job done. One more pro tip for exercising is that water is your friend. If you could find an exercise regimen in a pool, whether that be water Zumba or swimming lessons or literally just walking laps in the water, that can be phenomenal. Here's why. If you have a weak leg, and maybe it's very hard for you to walk on land, you weigh less in the water. And so there's less weight on that weak leg and you may find that you can do things in the pool that you can't do out of the pool. If you have problems with balance and you tend to fall to the left, the water pushes back to the right. And if you suffer from heat sensitivity and motor fatigue, the water literally pulls heat off your body by convection. And so seeking out activities in the pool can be particularly helpful for people impacted by MS. Step four is to eat clean and supplement low levels of vitamin D. And again, I encourage providers to engage in a conversation about nutrition with their patients. There is no diet that's been proven to slow multiple sclerosis, although there's multiple proposed diets out there. I do wanna share with you that cardiovascular risk factors speed up MS. And so a diet which is heart healthy is a good diet. Moreover, being obese makes everything harder, and a diet which helps you control your weight can be super, super helpful for many things, including energy levels. I would submit to you that a good place to start with a diet is as follows. Eat real food. Avoid fake food. Avoid sodas. Avoid fast food. Avoid highly processed foods. Avoid foods that have ingredients with words that you can't pronounce. I would also encourage you to avoid sugar-laden foods. You would be amazed at how much better you're gonna feel if you take that somewhat simple advice. Secondly, we need to supplement low levels of vitamin D. Low levels of vitamin D are associated with bad outcomes in MS. And I believe the evidence that supplementing vitamin D can help that. Now, I'm not suggesting that a person with MS run out and buy some vitamin D and take it, no. I am suggesting that the neurologist should check vitamin D levels in the blood and make recommendations to supplement using D3 to drive the level up into an appropriate range. And in my opinion, that range for people impacted by MS is between 50 and 100. I don't want it below 50 and I don't want it above 100. I encourage providers to ask the following lifestyle related questions to people each visit. Number one. Are you working or going to school, full-time or part-time? And have you missed any days of work because of your MS? Number two, are you exercising? If so, what are you doing and how often are you doing it? And are there barriers to you exercising presently? Number three, are you supplementing low levels of vitamin D? And when's the last time that we checked your level? And number four, are you smoking cigarettes? And if yes, do you have any interest in quitting yet? And now to answer the question of the day. Smoking tobacco speeds up MS disease progression. Please keep in mind that if you quit smoking, it slows it back down. Did you get the answer right? Over these last two videos, I've shared an easy recipe to help a person impacted by MS live their very best life despite having the disease. I want providers to help them be four for four in their fight against MS. Take the most effective disease modifying therapy they're comfortable with and make sure it's working. Exercise as part of your lifestyle. Don't smoke cigarettes and eat clean and supplement low levels of vitamin D. Hey village, would you feel comfortable sharing this video with your MS provider? Please leave your response in the comment section below. And if you would share it with them, I would love to hear what feedback they give you. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you haven't yet checked out that first video, I'll throw a link up above so that you can see it. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video right there, so check that one out. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click that circle with my face on it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.